In hypothesis testing, an important thing to take into consideration is probability. What's the probability that the difference between your treatment group and the control group existed before any manipulation or treatment took place? That is, what's the probability that sampling error alone is a cost for the difference between your treatment group and your control group? In our scenario, the treatment group is six people randomly selected from the population. Our control group is the population itself. What we're going to end up doing is taking a look for our sample after we give it uh, the two weeks of the vitamin water and we measure their IQ. We're going to ask ourselves what's the probability that that difference between the population mean of 100 and then the sample mean that we end up with. What's well, probably that difference could have existed before any treatment was ever given. That it pre-existed the treatment and was due to nothing other than just sampling error. The fact that our sample mean didn't start off equaling exactly the same thing as the population mean. Here on the right is our most extreme sample mean. Uh, these people had an average IQ somewhere around 109 or 110. But notice that we could get, if we randomly select six people, we could get a group average of around 109 or 110. Just due to chance, 12% of the time, you pick six people, their average IQ will already be that far from the population mean. So, if this is our reason for trying to say that vitamin water is helpful, it's not very convincing when 12% of the time it could happen if vitamin water was no more effective than just tap water itself. Now, the bigger the difference between uh, the treatment group and the, the control group, uh, that is, the further each of these sample means is from the population mean, notice that as it gets further, the probability of that needed chance is getting smaller and smaller. We essentially want a sample mean that's really far away from the population mean. So we can be pretty confident. Ah, it couldn't have happened easily due to sampling error. Must be because of the treatment. That's our goal. That's the basis uh, for hypothesis testing. Is a probability of that difference so small that it's not likely to have been due to sampling error. In the behavioral sciences, we set our um, decision criterion at 0.05. That is, if the probability is 0.05 or less, we'll go ahead and we'll reject the null hypothesis. And rejecting the null hypothesis means that essentially we're shrugging off sampling error as a cause and instead concluding that the treatment was responsible for the effect. Okay. So specifically, the probability of the difference between these conditions, treatment versus population, is 0.05 or less. We'll reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we retain it. So looking at our example over here, we have one situation where we'll reject the null hypothesis. The difference between this sample and the general population could be due to sampling error. It could have been true before they drank the vitamin water. The null hypothesis is true. You could get a difference this big due to chance 0.02% of the time. But that's fairly small. It's less than or equal to our 0.05. So for this case, we would go ahead and we'd reject the null hypothesis. For the other four samples, well, you could get sample means that are this distant from the population mean just due to chance fairly easily. And so for these cases we would go ahead and we'd retain the null. That's how we make our decision. If sampling error could account for the result uh, 0.05 or less, it's pretty rare, reject the null. If, it could hap if that difference could be due to sampling error more than 0.05, we'll retain the null. That 0.05 is called our alpha level. 
So as mentioned, the behavioral sciences, are we set our alpha to 0.05. That's kind of like our, our industry standard. And again, alpha is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis due to sampling error when the null hypothesis is true. When we make an error, our null hypothesis is correct, let's say, and drinking vitamin water is no more helpful than just tap water. We'll get a difference between the population mean and sample mean that's big enough to lead us to one reject the null 5% of the time. It's going to happen. If you do enough research, you will occasionally incorrectly reject the null hypothesis. Uh, your evidence is bogus just due to sampling error. That's going to happen 0.05 of the time. That type of error where you incorrectly reject the null hypothesis is called a type 1 error. All right, let's consider something on the more positive. Let's say that drinking vitamin water actually improves your IQ. In fact, it improves it pretty incredibly. Uh, the group of people who uh, drink the vitamin water, let's say it improved their IQ by 13.22 points. That's fairly substantial. We didn't know what their IQ started at, but it was 102. So actually already had a small little advantage just due to sampling error. You add to that initial small advantage, the 13.22, and that gets our group way out here around 115.22. And because they're way out here, the probability of that happening due to chance alone, due to sampling error, is 0.02. That's a pretty uh, small probability, and for that reason, we go ahead and we reject the null hypothesis. Our treatment was effective, we rejected the null, we made a correct decision. But sometimes your treatment will be effective, but you won't know it. Uh, in this case, we had our uh, sample. It starts uh, with an average IQ of 97. They started a little bit below average, just due to sampling error. They drank uh, for two weeks the vitamin water. It actually improved their IQ by 13 points. When we uh, gave them the IQ test, and this is the only thing that we know, their average IQ was 110. But you can get an average IQ of 110 due to sampling error uh, more often than 0.05 of the time. And because of that, we would have to retain the null. That would be an error. And that's called a type 2 error. So let's take a look at our decision matrix, that is, possible uh, scenarios, possible decisions, and what they mean. If your null hypothesis is true, that is that vitamin water is no better than tap water, and you retain the null hypothesis, that is, not enough evidence to reject the null, you just made a correct decision. Job well done. If the null hypothesis is true, but due to sampling error, you just happen to start with a group that was either really bright or is really impaired in terms of IQ. And that led you to reject the null hypothesis incorrectly due to bogus evidence. In this case, your bogus evidence is the uh, sampling error. It was way extreme, far away from the population mean. It's way out here, or way out here. That's called a type 1 error. All right, other possibility. The null hypothesis is false. Your vitamin water is a hit. It's going to help people improve their IQ. And after people drink uh, the vitamin water for two weeks and you test their IQ, boy, their IQ is really extreme, really high. They're like Einstein's, or unfortunately, terrible, terrible effect on them. But it clearly had an impact. And so you reject the null hypothesis. Congratulations, you made a correct decision. On the other hand, if your null hypothesis again is false, vitamin water is helpful, but it just didn't have a big enough impact to be noticed. That is, it, it had an impact, but you know what? The sample mean after all was said and done, it could have happened like that 
just due to sampling error fairly easily, then we'd end up retaining the null hypothesis. And that would be unfortunate. And that would be called a type 2 error. And that is our decision matrix.